Well, typically in my era, uh, they, uh, things were usually smooth. These, these are simple. aberrational moments and, and atypical. Yeah. They aren't normal moments. Yeah. But uh, since I gave you just a little seductive clue about this guy in the studio, you, you, probably, you I don't think you had heard this story. No. I, I don't know, know who we were recording with, but... but uh, the background singers were the Nashville Edition, which was yeah. Herschel Wigginton's group. Yeah. Herschel Wigginton was a, the bass singer in the group. Yeah. And he was a guy about five, nine, or ten, weighed about 120 pounds. He was about this, this yeah. wide, you know, if you turn sideways. <laughs> and so he had heard that Pachuki had been a fighter. So as Pachuki walked by, he was setting mics and everything, and Pachuki walked by him and he said, uh, Al, I, uh, see if you can get through my defenses. And, and he went into a fighter stance pose, and Pachuki, without thinking, just hit him in the stomach and knocked him completely unconscious. <laughs> and he's laying in the middle of RCAB. <laughs> and we're standing there stunned, and nobody goes to his defense. He's just laying there. I thought, he's probably dead. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and and uh, somebody then finally went and uh, started giving him resuscitation. And, Got him breathing again, and then somebody called nine one uh, called nine one one, and the ambulance came. Literally, they brought a stretcher in the studio, put the Herschel Wigginton yeah. on the stretcher, carried him out. They said, "Okay, where were we at?" And we continued the session as if nothing had happened with three background singers oh, instead man. of four, which was you know, <laughs> so. <coughs> those things kind of occasionally would happen. Yeah, but, well, but, I mean, I'm sure they happen now. That the, the town is so. Diverse now. I mean, everybody has home studios. There's probably some place where it happened last week, but uh, but you know, it just it seems like uh, as time does enhance everything, those funny stories uh, they have a life of their own. And well, I didn't know that one about patina with time. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of have this historical yeah. time frame, and and they develop this Browning effect. Yeah. But uh, w one other quickie, which I've. I've uh, countlessly given this, but this is a good uh, format to, since we're talking about how styles were created. Uh, we, we had been recording with Gene Watson for uh, a day or so, and, and we were finishing up at about close to five o'clock in the afternoon, and all of us, I think, I certainly had six and 10 p.m. sessions that night, so I needed to get out of there. And, and in those days, if, if they didn't like to pay overtime, and it was for Capitol Records. Yeah. But, but still, if they could avoid overtime, so we had ten minutes left, twelve minutes maybe, mm -hmm. and the producer's name was Russ Reeder, and and so he and uh, they needed one more song for the album to finish the album, so they rushed over to me and said, "Hey, you know, we just got this one more song. You got ten minutes. Would you, could we just do this song one take just to finish the album, and you just do the intro and steal?" I said, "Okay, sure." So he. he Gene Watson picked his guitar up, sat down, and went through it one time. We did our little number chart. And this three chord song, you know, turn it on, turn the machine on. So we did it in one take and and left the stu and left the session. I thought it sounded pretty good, you know, and uh, but I didn't think any more about it till I had a call the next morning about ten o'clock, and it was a recording engineer named Jim Williamson who was the chief engineer at Sound Emporium at the time, and he said. You need to come and hear what we've done. And he said, I'm going to play it for you on the phone. And he, and he played, he turned the speakers up, and he added nothing but reverb to my steel and turned me up. And it was it was farewell party. Wow, and, oh, man. And, and it was just magical when he put the yeah. reverb on and turned it up a little bit. And I was using a PV amp, which was not... Yeah, that's not your normal amp, right? Well, I, well, I'd used it for two or three years, but yeah. it didn't have that sizzle fender sound that I was... had normally gotten, but it, it, it had a special quality because it mm -hmm. probably was that amp. But but you could you know, you've been on sessions I'm sure and done this too, Paul, uh, countless times. But some of those kind of moments like that you couldn't sit down and make I mean you, uh, we could have spent half a day and still would have not come up with that yeah. to sound like that. You just do it when you got good players and yeah. and everybody's just hey do it. Turn it yeah. on. That's what we do and don't think about it and just play it. And sometimes magic occurs. And sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, it probably wouldn't. But, but that was one of those great moments, and it became another mm -hmm. uh, one of the steel guitar uh, 
collectibles for steel players. Oh, God, that's that's historic. I think it's like, uh, uh, don't you feel like if the, if, if it's like casting for a movie, if you've got the right actors and they can improv and you get in improv those tights, you get in those tight situations and it's like, okay, well, we all know this, the plot to this one, you know, and you, you had a song that was a, uh, had been recorded before, right? Well, I didn't know. I never heard it. Yeah, I never but, heard it. But it's a time. formula. But, yeah, it, it, it's a formula. It yeah. was an easy song. It was a beautiful melody. Yeah. Yeah. So you could not play it good if you. Well, a you, song like that is easy to play, you know. That's but, one of those songs, though, Lloyd. That that well, <laughs> yeah, it's better than good because that's that's one of those songs that happens. It's like there are certain songs that everybody can have their variation on, and but but when somebody uh, hits that magical. One. That's the one now, if you ever play that song behind <coughs> any artist, if you don't do as close as you can get to, to what your original steel part was, you're not playing the song well, to most, in most listeners' viewpoint. Probably most listeners, but among steel players, you know, I, oh. I found out later there was another great version by Jimmy Day. Oh, yeah. It was Johnny Bush that I didn't know anything about yeah. at the time. And uh, I, I made a point to listen when Buddy yeah. just told me that was a great cut. I, he, yeah. he didn't allude to the Gene Watson cut, yeah. and which was fine with me, but but I, I didn't know there was a Johnny Bush cut at the time, and yeah. I listened to it, and it was, I mean, it's a long solo also, yeah. and it's, it's equ probably equally good. And then then there was a guy named Alan Jackson <laughs> well, he, who cut it for one of his albums yeah. with Paul Franklin playing steel and but and, but and I, 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 I varied as, it well, but I still tried to stay true to it, and I just maybe did a little oh, little you, different thing. You, it was as good as uh, well, maybe better. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> we're not go there. We not go there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But, but, so there was at least three versions that were ma yeah. magic sounding to me, and yeah. then uh, Terry Crisp cut it. Joe Nichols, I was going to. Joe Nichols. Yeah. Another great version. Oh, his, he, you know, Terry kills everything he plays. So, so uh, it's one of those songs. Yeah. If you're a good player, man, how can you not play that song? Good, yeah. You know? But but still, uh, they outline. You know, now Jimmy Day obviously was before yours, but but once uh, Gene Watson had the hit on it. You know, that's yeah. let's. And he named his band the Farewell. Party. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, <laughs> it's like once that becomes, it's like Pass Me By or or uh, you know, uh, Easy Lovin'. There, there are things that happen on records that sometimes to play that song and to do it justice, you got to play that. You, uh, you sometimes gotta... it requires. I mean, I, I'm like you. I don't, yeah. I don't like to stick to the format of a song if I'm playing with somebody uh, yeah. this, a live thing. But I'll stick in the ballpark. But if it's if, if it's one of those great songs, I mean, you cannot not play it. It's, it's doing yeah. an injustice if you don't play it the right right way. But the way it was cut. But. I, well, I mean, you, you told me you don't want me to talk about. No, your, no. I mean, I was just playing, but, but, uh, This is about you. I want. Okay. I want. <laughs> but I, I, pre I really but, appreciate but that. But I, I have to say, I mean, uh, 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 the only time uh, another player brought tears to my eyes since I've been playing steel guitar was the night I heard you play. Fair, uh, oh. I mean, uh, together again at the Station Inn, uh, and and it was so, and it was so much. Uh, Originality and emotion, and it was different than anything I'd ever heard. And mm. it was just, uh, and I know you approach it differently each time because you, you played it so many times. You, you do get it's a very yeah. another simple two or three chord song, but but uh, it's hard not to play the Tom Bromley solo, who cut the yeah. original with Buck Owens in 1963 or four, but 64 I believe. But uh, still. You you made a whole new song out of it that night with Vince Gill singing, and it was. Uh, oh, thank you, I, man. I just uh, was. Uh, well, so I don't. I'm, I don't know what to say. But I mean, you told me that you know you were very nice enough to tell me that when you came backstage uh, that night, and I just it overwhelmed me, and it, and it's uh, you know we we play for our own love of the instrument, but sure. when when a when someone you respect and you you admire. Uh, to the depth that I have with you ever since I've met you and be ever, long before I met you, ever since I heard you. And, uh, and when you hear things like that, it's hard to believe, you know, because you, you, well, you, 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 you... I was surprised at my own reaction, <laughs> but, but it was so good. I yeah. just, I was, it was compelling. It was, uh, I, well, now, the other guy I can listen to uh, without exception always is Tommy White. He, yeah, me too. He's always a, a surprise for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I never know what he might play, and he, it's always 
measure. Yeah. It's always great. But I say that, but I don't ever remember having tears brought to my eyes. Not, not that it wasn't as good, but, but it, it was just something that, about that night and the emotion of that song. Mm -hmm. And Vince sang it so beautifully, and I thought it's probably the gracious. onion rings at the. It's probably the onion rings at the. No, I really. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. Everybody's <laughs> ever been to the uh, third Leslie has heard you. Oh you know, uh, well, they, they walk away. But uh, that night was, uh, if you were there, it was a special night. Well, that song, and that, and I knew. Uh, I told the lady I was with, Sandra. Mm -hmm. I said, you watch, that'll be the, that's the winner of the night. I said, when he gets, when when you got through with that solo, man, everybody was uh, like on their feet. It was that kind of, moment. oh man. So it, 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 there are moments like that that do happen and it's wonderful to be part of it sometimes. And I've, I've got a question. Too. I know, I've got a question because that's what I was going to say. You have those moments and, and, uh, Okay, let's talk about where you are. If you're playing to that emotional place, like I know that night when you said that, I didn't, uh, some people call it the zone. You get in this it, place where the, yeah. it's almost like the instruments, music's flowing music's through you. Playing, yes, yeah. it is. And it's, it's, yeah. and, it, and it's like when it's over with, you're almost not aware. It's like, and, and it, it almost, after it's done for me, it's like, there's a, a few, you have to, what just happened? Because oh, no, I, if I could play that good every time I played, because the <laughs> next time I try to play it, I'll, I'll try to get there. Yeah, yeah, and, and where, well, where did that go? About it, yes. Yeah, and you can't create that. It just, those are gifts. Those are wonderful. Taps into the that celestial intelligence of yeah. where it seems to me there's this, this uh, stream of consciousness of yeah. thought that uh, everything is written and music, all the music's written. And sometimes it, if you, you know, if you get, at a certain level of play, you can tap into that source, and, and it is this. It can be magical, and I, I've been able to, at times, just almost look at it an out, out of body experience and yeah. say, "I'm not doing this," and it's Are just you, playing itself. Yeah, it's like you. Uh, everything goes away, and it's like, wait, I'm not. It's, it's like you're almost watching somebody else play through your Precisely, body. Precisely, yes. It's, it's uh, a uh, very uh, strange. Uh, it's weird, experience. yeah. And I think it's probably uh, easy. I mean, I. Probably is explained by the, this endorphin re uh, chemical yeah. release of the brain in the brain, which is a opiate-like yeah. chemical the brain releases, you know. But it's the clearest high in the world. It's yeah. it's not a drug-induced high, and and I think uh, with the right talent, the right moment, and the right song, and and the right environment, uh, sometimes those things take over, and man, you, you do magical stuff that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, you should have been surprised at that because uh, that's, I've heard you play yeah. it so many ways, and every oh, one yeah. was incredible. But that that was an well, incredible I, plus, you know. Well, I was, but but I was just, uh, you know, if we could all figure out how to get there every time we play, well, <laughs> oh, then that would, yeah. I always, that's why. But for me, that's also the driving factor of why I play, because there'll be those moments, and I don't forget. It's like, man, I was so into it. And then the next time you go try to play that very thing, you didn't get, you know, it doesn't give back to you as much. And, uh, and you got to work it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I know the feeling. Well, uh, this is, uh, man, I can't, again, I, I can't thank you enough for doing this. And what, what you've done, uh, uh, what you're doing for everybody out there and, and just sharing your ideas is, uh, well, it's, it's monumental to me. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I still can, and like you, I, I'm so sad that so many of our friends are gone, you know, who, yeah. who we loved and uh, loved their playing, too. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, maybe some of these uh, little stories of the past, uh, since they're, they're going to be lost when I'm gone, uh, they should be uh, memorialized in some sense. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, there is several books involved, but I can't, I'm not going to write a book now. It's too late, yeah. I think, uh, for me to spend... I've got more things to do. With. Yeah, you got you got you're going to Italy. <laughs> Let's you know if you don't mind to share some. I mean, you're you're getting uh, uh, to to go places. Lloyd loves art, and uh, what better place in the world I to see, see the architecture? Chapel yes, in Rome. I want to see uh, Michelangelo's masterpiece. Yeah, and the statue of David. You know, I want to uh, I want to take a trip on the Orient Express. Oh, you should. I, I would that. love to do that. <laughs> We're going to do that too, not this year, but next year. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, this, I've been to Italy uh, the one time on the tour, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's an amazing place. And 
we've we've talked about that. Yes. But I I think that that's uh, you know that's great that you know. You're just, you're not, you've got fire. You don't talk about losing fire. You've got it everywhere well, you I'm, turn. I'm still, I'm curious. I'm still enjoying life. Yeah. I still love the steel guitar. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, you know, your generation brought a whole new dimension to it with uh, you and Tommy White. And and uh, everybody uh, stands on your, your shoulders now, you know, and there were more of us that the shoulders were stood on when you guys were young. And, and unfortunately, they're all gone. But you and Tommy still are at the top of the mountain, and can can uh, be the the uh, inspiration for this new generation of players because they don't have the old, the other guys are gone, man. And, and uh, I hope I'll be around for a while. Oh, you're you're good. No, I, yeah, I, you're going to be around. Say, but. You're going to be around. But the thing that, that they get to witness is firsthand. The, the genius in thought and concepts and, and unless that's hard to do and when you're doing the normal kind of interviews and you know but setting your guitar well, up here and and becoming vulnerable to like you know just like okay mm -hmm. not worried about this is not a steel guitar show and I'm going to play mm -hmm. the, my very best it's like you know you you've really shared things like uh, just about I didn't so many things I didn't know about the blocking like I did had no idea you were doing what what is known as pick blocking but I had no idea because I you know, well, and it, just it, all, so many you know, insights. And there's so much, uh, those little elements that become, we've talked about that, yeah. that become uh, like splitting the atom, but because there's so many elements yeah. below the atom and the, the neutrons yeah. and, and the uh, so many things that are yeah. way below the atom that, that science didn't yeah. know about but until they split the atom, until yeah. Einstein and yeah. uh, Oppenheimer and uh, and, uh, uh, Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, the steel guitar is in, in a less complicated fashion, I guess. That same way, the more you get involved, the, the more complex it is, and and there's so many elements. And uh, when, when I start trying to, I mean, you've you've always been a teacher, and so you can teach, but I'm not I'm not a teacher, so I, I get kind of uh, disconnected uh, I, if I try to. Uh, disconnect what I did and, and unlayer it, mm -hmm. then it becomes a different creature to me. Yeah. Uh, wh whereas if I just played it, it was uh, it was thought out, but yeah. it was also there was a spontaneity to it too, yeah. and an emotional connection of content. Yeah. But but I, I, it's hard for me to to dissect uh, yeah. the, uh, the stuff I did. I, I can tell you how I did it, you know, but. But it just seemed natural to do it at the time. I wasn't mm -hmm. thinking of it in the terms when you start dissecting. Yeah. Well, how'd you play? Why would you play like like Bart Angel? You know. I mean, yeah. That's a, it's a very simple song again. But when you got a great singer and and uh, he likes you playing, and you like his singing. Yeah. And, <laughs> hey, that's a good formula. You know, you play. It's it's the best. Well, I I'm gonna give you. A, I got to get a hug. One more hug, man. <laughs> I've enjoyed oh, it. Oh, I, I love this, and this is me wonderful. Too, Paul. And I want to go to Italy. Next year, take me. Okay. <laughs> we, we'll, we'll put you in the, in the uh, mix. Oh, yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank me you too. so Thank much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.